class. Today we shall survey some literary terms. Many students fall prey of the examiners just because whenever they test your knowledge as regards literary terms and literary appreciation, you choose the correct, I mean you choose the wrong answer because you are ignorant of the literary terms in literature. The first one we shall treat is known as blurb. Blurb. I'm sure you've not heard this literary term before. Blurb. Blurb is an inscription on the jacket of a book. Blurb is a promotional word about the author or the book. So blurb is an inscription on the jacket of a book. They are usually promotional words. About the author or the book. Sometimes on the jacket of a book, they write, this book has sold more than 1,000 copies within a few months. This inscription is referred to as what? As blog. The next one is anthology. Anthology. What do we mean by anthology of literature? Anthology is a literary term that has to do with, it, it, is, a, it is a collection of different points. Is a what? A collection of different points edited in a book. So, anthology of literature refers to what? A collection of different points edited in a book. The next one is epitaph. What do we mean by epitaph? Epitaph is an inscription. Epitaph is an inscription on a tomb is an inscription. Sometimes, if you see a burial ground, they write, in loving memory of our dear father. So, epitaph is an inscription on a tomb. Okay. The next one is called foyer. Foyer. What do we mean by foyer? Foyer is a literary term. It is a term that is associated with theater. With what? Theater. Foyer is a large room in the theater that is meant for the audience. Am I communicating? You know, we have... Now, can you tell me? Look at the following words. Audience, congregation, spectator, audience. A group of people that gather to watch what? To watch a play. Congregation, a group of people that gather for religious purpose. Spectator, a group of people that gather to watch sports events. So, foyer is a large room in the theater that is meant for the audience. Now, the next one. Now, let us write. A large room in the theater that is meant meant for the audience. That is, a group of people who, are gather, who gather to watch the play. The next one is called proscenium. What do I call it? Proscenium. 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 What do you mean by proscenium? Proscenium is the space between the stage and the audience in a theater. Proscenium is the space between the stage and the audience in the theater. Okay, okay. Proscenium is the space between the stage and the audience, audience in a theater. Uh, another literary term is eponymous character, eponymous character. 
Of course, we have different types of character. When we talk in terms of character, we're talking in terms of the contribution of individuals towards the development of a work of arts. We have different types of character. Of course, a character can be determined in three ways. We have our, a, a character can be determined in three ways. What he or she says, what he or she does, what other people say about him or her. We have different types of character. We have the flat character. We have the run character. Do you understand? And we have other characters. Okay, we have the principal character. We have the principal character, the major character, and so on. Now, eponymous character. An eponymous character is the type of character. Whose name is a principal character in a narrative? Whose name is also used as the title of the narrative? Eponymous character is a principal character in a work of arts, in a work of arts, whose name is also used as the title of the narrative. A good example is Othello. Othello is the principal character. The entire story centers on Othello. However, his name is also used as the title of the narrative. Do I seem to be communicating? Yes. Okay. Now, another literary term is travelogue. 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 What do we mean by travelogue? Travelogue is a work of art that centers on one's traveling experience. Is what? A work of art that centers on what? One's traveling, one's traveling experience that is your experience the experience you gather in the course of embarking on a journey so travelogue is a work of arts that centers on one's experience in the course of embarking on a journey, travelogue. Po poetic license is another literary term. What do we mean by poetic license? Poetic license is the liberty, is the freedom that a poet enjoys. Is the liberty given to a poet? Is the freedom given to a poet such that? He, makes, he or she makes use of grammar without following the conventional rules. Am I communicating? It's the freedom, the liberty that a poet enjoys such that he or she does not follow the conventional rules of grammar. Do I seem to be communicating? Do I seem to be communicating? Now, let's look at prop. props. What are props? Props are objects used on the stage. Props are objects used on, on the stage. Can you give me an example of a prop? Walk lock, walk lock, chair, and so on. So props are objects used on the stage. Then we have diction. 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 What do you mean by diction? Diction is the vocabulary used by a writer to convey his or her message. Diction refers to the writer's choice of words. Sometimes the diction could be easy to comprehend and sometimes it could be difficult to comprehend. So diction refers to writer's choice of words. Diction refers to the vocabulary used by a writer to convey his or her message. Diction refers to writer's choice of words. Choice of words. It is the vocabulary employed by a writer 
to convey is or a message to the reader. To the reader. Do I seem to be communicating? Okay. Now let's look at another one, which is Gertz. Who is a Gertz? A traditional storyteller who helps to preserve oral tradition. Have you watched this program, Aloy Yagba? There's a program called Aloy Yagba, anchored by an old woman who has a facial mark. So that woman is what? A Gertz. So a Gertz is a traditional storyteller. Storyteller. Who helps to preserve oral tradition? Do I seem to be communicating? Who is a Gertz? A traditional storyteller who helps to preserve oral tradition. Do I seem to be communicating? Yes, okay. Now let's look at another literary term. Let's look at suspense. Suspense. What do you mean by suspense? Suspense is a device that is used in a work of art to arouse curiosity. To arouse what? Curiosity. Such that the reader or the viewer will be anxious to know the next scene that we unfold. Am I communicating? Yes, Suspense is what? Is a technique used in a work of art. It could be in a novel, it could be in what? In a drama. Used by a playwright, used by a novelist to create curiosity. Now, let us assume you are watching a play and I'm playing the role of an herbalist and I want to, I'm chanting incantation in order to kill someone spiritually. And I said, Shegun, by the time I call your name three times, you must die. If I call Shegun the first time, the second time, before I call Shegun the third time, you will be curious, you will be in a state of what? Suspense. You will be curious to know the next scene that we unfold. Am I communicating? Yes, so suspense arose curiosity in the mind of the reader such that they are eager to know, they are inquisitive to know the next scene that will unfold. Do I seem to be communicating? Yes, okay. Now, Remember, how many literary terms have we treated? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's move further. Okay. Sejura is a pause within the lines of poetry. Sejura is what? A pause. Sometimes if you see the symbol of full stop within the lines of poetry. So, sejura is a pause within the words lines of poetry. Please take notes. Then, another one is prompter. Prompter. Who is a prompter? Prompter. Who is a prompter? A prompter is an actor of the stage. A prompter is an actor of the stage. A prompter reminds, he reminds actors and actresses of their forgotten lines. Forgotten lines. So a prompter is, a prompter is an actor of the stage. You see the prompter beside the cameraman. The role of a prompter is to guide the actors and actress as they dramatize and to guide, them, to guide them and to remind them of their forgotten lines. Do I seem to be communicating? Yes, sir. Sorry. We've treated prompter. Then the next one, we have enjabment. What do I call it? Enjabment. Who can tell me another name for enjabment? Run online. Eh? Run online. God bless you. Run online. Another name for enjabment, it is also known as what? Run online. 
What do we mean by what do we mean by enjambment? What do we mean by enjambment? When the line of a poetry falls or runs into another line. Look at this. If you look at this poem, the panic of growing older. The panic of growing older. The panic. This line falls into the words. Normally, it should be the panic of growing older in a line. Am I communicating? But it falls into the, other, the second line. So what it, there is use of words. Enjambment. The panic of growing older. Now, let's look at Dielzin. What do you mean by Dielzin? A poem of ten lines. A poem, just write, a poem of ten lines. The next one is Limerick. Limerick is a humorous poem of five lines. A what? A humorous poem of poem of five five lines. Do I seem to be communicating? So please take notes. Enjambment means words. Who can tell me another name for rhetorical question? Another name for a rhetorical question. No, 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 no. Okay, that's my assignment for you. Another name for a rhetorical question. Okay, find the meaning of this word when you get home. Find the meaning of this word when you get home. Sir, so, we've discussed the housing, limerick, enjambment, prompter, sejourer. Travelogue, perps, diction, girts. I told you that a foyer is a large room in the theater that is meant for the audience. Now, what do you understand by flashback? Flashback is a narrative technique that is used to recap an action that took place in the present to the words, in the past to the words, present. To bring forward an action that took place in the past to the words, present. So let us write. Is a narrative technique used to recap an action that took place in the past. Do I seem to be communicating? Yes, okay. So flashback is one of the elements of drama. Of course, we have many elements of drama. We have prologue, we have epilogue, we have our mono dramatic monologue, we have soliloquy, and so on. So today, I think I have been able to expose you to some basic literary terms. So in our next class, we continue from there. Have a nice day.